8.55 Eastern Time. And Columbia and its affiliated stations bring you Elmer Davis and the news. With the neutrality bill coming up in the House of Representatives tomorrow, the German press today vigorously attacked American foreign policy. Leading the campaign was the Diplomatische Politische Correspondenz, the semi-official organ of the foreign ministry, which accused America of a double standard of neutrality and said that one must be careful that a series of small decisions of each day do not lead to war again, as President Roosevelt once said they did in the last did the last time. It was said that President Roosevelt's statement that repeal would not send Americans to the battlefields of Europe could not be taken too seriously because too much joy had been displayed over it in England and France. The lifting of the embargo, it was said, alone could not create such enthusiasm. The correspondents criticized Mr. Roosevelt's remark that one need not be mentally completely neutral as inconsistent with his concern for the preservation of peace. Further, it was complained that while America acquiesced in the British blockade, the city of Flint affair was made into a case with, quote, all kinds of propagandistic methods, end quote. But so far as we know, the State Department has objected only to the Russian angle of the city of Flint case, not to the seizure of the ship by the Germans. Other German papers, as our Berlin correspondent Mr. Shira reported earlier this evening, are quoting the attacks on American policy in the official Russian papers Pravda and Izvestia, which blame the capitalists and munitions makers for repeal of the arms embargo. Mr. Shirer said that officials of the foreign ministry have no illusions about American opinion, but that the man in the street must certainly think that the Senate flew in the face of public sentiment. It is worth noting that this statement as to the difference between informed and ordinary opinion was, of course, passed by the German censor. The city of Flint came back today to the Norwegian port of Tromsø on the Arctic Ocean, the same port where the Germans first took her as a prize. This time, she was on her way back from Murmansk in Russia toward a German port, if she can get through the blockade. The American crew was still on board, but the German prize crew was in charge when the city of Flint put in at Tromsø about noon and wanted to take on supplies. The Norwegians wouldn't let her have any, and she was escorted out beyond the three-mile limit by a Norwegian warship at four o'clock. German feeling toward the United States is not likely to be improved by the award today by the German-American Mixed Claims Commission of $50 million in damages to American and Canadian claimants for losses suffered in the Black Tom explosion of 1916 and the Kingsland explosion of 1917. We were, of course, still neutral then, and in these explosions, large quantities of munitions destined for the Allies were destroyed, according to testimony by German agents. Unfortunately, the German member of the commission had withdrawn, and the decision was made by the two American members. And the case is certain to be cited in the House of Representatives debate as an instance of what is likely to happen again if we again make munitions for the Allies. Lord Lothian, the British ambassador in Washington, tonight told, told the State Department that the liner Athenia, sunk on September 3rd, did not carry any guns, munitions, or explosives. This contradicts the statement of Gustav Anderson, an American passenger, who said that the chief officer and members of the crew had told him that she carried guns for Canadian coast defense and was later to be outfitted as a sea raider. Anderson did not say he saw the guns himself. Chief Officer Copland has now made an affidavit that there were no guns and munitions aboard and that he never talked to Anderson about the matter at all. The British note says that the Athenia was not sunk by a mine, by British submarines, by destroyers, or by internal explosion but according to the British information by a German submarine. Apparently the note, of whose text we have very little as yet, even denies that the damaged hulk was sent to the bottom by British destroyers the next day, as was originally reported in London dispatches passed by the censor. What may be the most important news of the week is the meeting in Moscow tomorrow of the Soviet Supreme Council, at one of whose sessions Premier and Foreign Minister Molotov will talk about Russia's foreign relations. Every capital in Western Europe has a different story about what he's going to say. But a United Press dispatch from Moscow, admitting that there is no official advance information, says it is believed he will reiterate that the Russian government intends to maintain its neutrality. It is also said that he may redefine the relations of Russia and Germany, but there is no indication in Moscow that this means a closer alliance. And the Finnish minister, Pasekivi, is taking his government's reply back to Moscow tonight. Apparently it won't be completely satisfactory to the Russians, but the Finns are prepared to ask that all differences be settled by arbitration as an existing treaty provides. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.